Let's get one thing out of the way really quick. This is an amazing weapon. Honestly, it's one of the staples of Warframe. The shotgun staples, that is. Get it now. Build it. Love it. But if you need a bit more convincing and a bit more proof, well... Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be re-diving deeper into the Kuva Comb. It's an absolutely glorious primary shotgun. I'm going to have a cheapo build, something introductory for more casual or newer Tenno coming into the game. <laughs> but don't worry, it's fully capable of wrecking house. And of course, we're also going to have a souped up setup with galvanized mods, prime mods, ribbons, arcane, steel path, essentially the works. That said though, please bear in mind that my built-in guides usually take a more new player friendly tone simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built and the why behind it. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Kuva Comb. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Kuva Comb is a shotgun, my friends, an automatic shotgun and a full-blown monster. But this one doesn't start like that. It starts off with a single, solitary, uh, pinpoint accurate, for the most part, pellet. A single one, that's it. But the more you fire, the more the weapon ramps up fire rate and more pellets per shot. At full fire rate, you're consuming 4 ammo from your magazine per shot. And this is basically how you're gonna annihilate most of your targets. Now please notice the spread, the accuracy on this one, uh, it's a shotgun, what exactly did you expect? 15 meter test, as per the usual, and you see you are peppering the entire crosshairs, some of the pellets escaping, but we got a solution for that. Fall off starts from 13 meters by default, and this is 15 meters, so this would be 13. Honestly, you don't really need any more than that. Unless, of course, you want to use it as a sniper. But let's jump into stats and see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity, 80 out of 80, what gives? And yours starts off with only 30 out of 30. How terrible. First off, jump into actions, plug in that auto king catalyst, double that mod capacity. Should you do it? Yes, like right now. Like right bloody now, this is an amazing weapon. Highly recommend under 99%, okay, 98.6% of circumstances. Now, this one goes up in capacity the more you format capping out at 5. That's why you get all the way to 80 you get two more per forma now my friends you don't need this many forma but the thing is you need to format five times to draw out all the mastery points from any kuva or tenant weapon or the parasesis so do bear that one in mind as for polarities come on just simply go for these it's simple you should unlock the arcane slot because it gives more power and the option is simple you're going for slashy slashy Merciless. You're gonna be using it in tandem with your melee weapon dexterity. You wanna go for a raw strength approach, something like corrosive only, you can go with deadhead. Now, what progenitor should I choose for my Kuva comb? Well, honestly, considering all the fantastic... Look, look at all these fantastic shotgun mods that don't fit on a build. They don't. That's the thing. I would love to have one or two more slots on the comb, in which case I would use my Kuva Combs element simply to work in my favor. My recommendation is to go for Toxin. You don't necessarily need to be going for a high roll. This is an electricity roll, which is not ideal, but still okay. I think it's 58%. Just go with whatever Toxin roll, because the higher it is, yes, the damage is going to be a bit more higher, but the lower it is, that means more proc priority for Slash or elemental weight for Slash, right? So just get whatever Toxin roll and enjoy the weapon. Yes, yes, that's. Like I said, fall off is good for 13 to 26. You can go in the XL slot, which you should unlock with something like Galvanized Acceleration or the Normal Acceleration. Honestly, you don't need the additional fall off without more accuracy. More than 13 meters, the accuracy of the weapon doesn't really support it. In this slot, believe it or not, a huge DPS increase, which is not that easy to calculate because it really depends on the situation that you're in, is actually narrow battle. It's not hard to get this one. It's a 30% accuracy on hit when aiming for 9 seconds. Honestly, this means more pellets in your targets and less pellets in walls, ground, whatever else. Trust me on this one, it is a big DPS increase. Alternatively, maybe you're crazy and if you like to go for a lot of fire rate, you can go for shotgun, ammo mutation or vigilante supplies. Where were we? Oh yes, critical chance, critical damage on this one. Well, the critical chance and critical damage isn't all that high, but a 19% base is doable nowadays simply because we, the corrupted mods got a buff. And of course, I'm talking about critical deceleration, as you know, uh, Blunderbuss sucks and it has sucked forever and we're still not getting a prime it would be too powerful but somehow <laughs> that's what they said that it'll be too powerful but critical deceleration seems fine don't get me wrong minus fire rate I really dislike minus fire rate on this weapon it's not good the more fire rate the more natural it feels the magazine supports it is 209 granted you do consume 4 ammo at full fire rate per 
uh, shot though. Noise alarming, because yes. Punch roll of 1.5 by default, which is not bad at all. It goes for the Grenier Shield dude and other stuff as well. Reload of 2 seconds is a tad on the high side if you want to go for a full, full fire rate uh, build, but we got a solution for that. Riven 2 out of 5. I'm surprised. Legitimately, I am surprised because honestly, this is one hella powerful weapon. I was fully expecting the whole 1 out of 5 thing and for me not to have to get Riven. But there you go. You guys ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. Why aren't you using the weapon? It's great. Now, multiplier is high at 2.3x, so again, further uh, reinforcing the idea of a critical build, especially for bonus additive after effects. Status chance of 90%. And with all the multi shot, I mean, you're gonna be applying status after status. It is worth nowadays going for over 100% status chance because the single, a single pellet, a single damage instance can generate multiple procs and whatnot. Impact, puncture, and slash. Highest is slash, which is fantastic. Electricity follows in my case. Again, this is a 58% electricity roll. You can get a lower toxin roll, so it's easier to make something like corrosive or viral on the weapon. You can even go for heat. That's fine as well. But again, you will soon see the more mods you have for the weapon, the more cramped the build will be. And speaking about a build, let's check out a standard build. Damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance and critical damage for the use of critical deceleration, 200%, and shrapnel shot. You also got the two vital mods, toxic barrage and frigid blast, together with hunter munitions and shotgun spaz as your option slot. Narrow battle, as uh, previously stated, in the excellent slot. You don't really need more fall off than it has. Now, a few explanations. This is a new player-friendly setup, yes, a uh, more casual tenor that doesn't have all the fancy mods, galvanized mods, prime mods, whatever mods, and all whatnot. If you already got the fancy mods, just wait a little bit. We're gonna test the weapon directly like this. I highly encourage you going for fire rate. There is one mod that gives more fire rate, and it's called Repeater Clip. It's 105 instead of 90. It's better, yes, but it's on reload, meaning you're gonna fire, 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 yeah, this is so cool, and it stops, and they're like, oh. Why did it stop? Why did you stop? So that's why I recommend flat increases such as this one. Toxic Barrage easily obtained from Corrupted War in the Void and Frigid Blast from Spy Missions. New player friendly easy mode setup. Oh, and Critical Deceleration, you get that one by doing Vaults. You don't know how to do Vaults? You want to farm mods which you really need, which are called Corrupted Mods? Hey! Horrible segue. Link the cards right now. For that. Oh, let me check. I don't have corrosive projection or anything stupid that will skew the test results. There you go. No corrosive projection, nothing up my sleeve. Spawn in the 120 corrupted heavy goons, mama. Spawn them in. Past sortie free level, easy mode gameplay. Of course, the weapon starts off a little slow. No, it doesn't. I got fire rate. Don't be stupid. <laughs> and now I got trapped. Look at this. I got trapped. No shot. The amount of damage is stupid, mama. It's stupid. <laughs> Why you no die? Why you no die? Did I not spray you enough? <laughs> I love it. Look look at the power. Look at the power of the Kuva comb. And it's automatic. All you gotta do is press button. That's all you gotta do. Now you got the extra accuracy with narrow battle. So you don't even treat this one as a shotgun. You can easily treat it as a rifle if you want to. Make sure to make use out of that punch through as well. Something like so. I sprayed everybody enough. Look at that. This is a cheap build, nothing expensive my friends, this is one hella powerful weapon and of course you can make variations on the build, it's not a problem, but this is the standard viral mumu setup, get your viral, get your mumu. Now, let's say you do have all the mods in the game, yeah, everything you need my friends, you're looking at something like this, galvanized heavy, yes it does work, galvanized hell, you got a Riven on this one, even with 2 out of 5 is worth it if you manage to get the right roll. In my case it is worth it because I can use it to get the element I don't have. I got Toxin Multishot on this one, it's not a fantastic roll but it works. More critical damage with Prime Ravage, it gives a bit more than Shrapnel Shot. Oh by the way, we're not using the normal Ravage anymore because it's, you know, garbage. Oh, and Chilling Reload instead of the 6060 Cold Mod. I forgot to make this recommendation at the standard build as well. Honestly, a faster reload makes the weapon simply feel better, so go for Chilling Reload as an option instead of Frigid Blast. Hunter Munition as before, Critical and Prime Cleanse Corpus instead of Prime Point Blank. Mm -hmm. You can go for something like this. Honestly, when it comes to up until level 200, you should go with the flat damage mods or this is your option slot some fire rate you should really try a little bit of amalgam shotgun spaz or the normal one if you don't care for the revive speed but i like this you get to have all the cool mods so there you go this would be a standard build from my point of view when it comes to 
normal level content up until 200. You're going past 200, you want to stay forever in a steel path, something, you go with a cleanse mod. Probably going to be corrupted, grenier, whatever you're going to be choosing. And of course, the last one, as per usual, is the flat damage. In this case, I wouldn't really go with prime point blank, simply because you got plenty damage from galvanized savvy and primary merciless, which you are going to be using. You can use deadhead as well, considering all the pellets you put in your targets. It's no issue whatsoever. I'm going to showcase on these guys with shotgun spaz, because it makes the weapon feel better. It's as simple as... Ah, uh, shotgun spaz, amalgam shotgun spaz. And we're gonna test against the same target so you can see the difference. We're gonna ev even bump up the level to 160. Not that it's gonna make much of a difference. As previously stated, this is beast mode weapon. And beast mode weapon doesn't really work. Now, of course, this being a galvanized setup and all whatnot, you're gonna have to get a couple of kills to get the flat damage rolling. But as soon as that flat damage starts rolling... Careful you don't overdo it when it comes to fire rate, because then you might have slight ammo issues. If that's not a concern for you, you simply drop a pad, okay, you use carrier and all whatnot, you can even use in the uh, weapon XL slot instead of narrow battle, something like a uh, ammo mutation. The vitals helping the electricity proc as well. I'm just stopping the fire shoes so you can see how much of a chomper it is. Again, cleanse is an option, point blank is an option, but something like this simply feels right. Now let's take it to an actual mission to see how she does. Steel Path versus the Corrupted. Welcome to the Void, my friends. Now let's see what the Kuvacom can do against the Steel Path Corrupted. Obviously the experience is gonna be pretty much the same as running a hot knife through butter. Absolutely annihilating whatever stands before you. Here's a bit of a tip if you're using the Panzer Volpophila, like I am using the Panzer Volpophila, then there's no real reason to build Vital on your weapon anymore. Or you can use your secondary to prime your target. Simply use Corrosive on the weapon or something like Corrosive Heat. Honestly, the weapon is hella powerful. It doesn't really matter what kind of content you throw at it, it's gonna do a good job. I highly, highly recommend it. The weapon now let's see if we manage to find some corrupted heavy goons which have a bit more hp so i can demonstrate the power of the weapon. it just jumps through everything oh look there's a bunch of targets there including a corrupted heavy gunner and there she goes that's pretty much it my friends let's hop on back to the simulacrum Now about Warframe buffs, you don't need to go all out with something like Mirage Prime or Hatter which obviously will buff the weapon greatly. What you can do is simply use the minor of buffs. You can use something like your Arcanes. You can put on Arcane Tempo, Arcane Acceleration. Corrosive Projection does have an effect but I'm not gonna let you believe that this is what's important here. So we're just gonna replace it with Sprint Boost. Now you can go with Arcane Tempo. Fire rate, yes, on critical hit, 50% chance for 12 seconds, the duration is nice. Arcane Acceleration is a higher chance to proc, it's a 30%, 90%, but for 9 seconds, but considering how many pellets you fire at the target, Tempo might actually be better. As for your second Arcane, of course, that's gonna be Avenger, a bit more crit. Considering the base critical chance right now of the weapon, I believe it's 57, 57 and another 45 from Arcane Avenger, since this is a bonus additive. After effect, we're going to guaranteed crits, we're going to 102, plus we have the speed. If I have the speed and I don't want to overdo it with speed, so I don't have ammo issues, instead of amalgam shotgun uh, spaz, I can use something different. For example, a uh, flat damage mod like Prime Point Blank or... Fine, a bloody cleanse mod. Here you go. I'm using a freaking cleanse mod. Let's test it out like so. So we're not going full retard, uh, full warframe buffs just yet. We're gonna simply spawn in the corrupted heavy goons, level 120. Unpause them so they can hit me, and I can get my buffs. Going for headshots as per the usual, my friends, because yes, headshot multiplier does matter a whole lot. Take a look at that. Absolutely freaking destroyed whatever stood before you with no problem. When did you get there? Whatsoever. Take a look at that. Beautiful, absolutely fantastic. And they're not even going full Warframe boss with something like Mirage or Harrow or anything of the sort because you don't really need to. Keep the fire rate at least one, one slot for the fire rate. Whether that be an Arcane, whether that be a mod, that's up to you depending on what you're more comfortable with and what you have at your disposal, but make sure you keep the fire rate because without it, the weapon simply feels a little bit too sluggish. Fire rate is fine, magazine is fine. If you have issues with ammo, don't forget to drop or pad or maybe mod uh, the Excellent slot for an ammo mutation. Of course, we can take it further than this. We can use Lady Mirage or Harrow in this case. Mm, let's go with... We got guaranteed crit. Yes, we do. Let's go with Mirage, the ever so lovely Warframe weapon buffer. Adjust the fashion because, you know, I cannot live without the proper fashion like so, like so. 
Now, when it comes to Warframe buffs, obviously a Karosi Projection is the way to go against Heavily Armored Target. Don't feel forced into this one. If your build calls for whatever, something like Physique, Regi or whatever else, go for the aura of your choosing. As previously stated, one fire rate arcane, either acceleration or tempo. In this case, I think tempo might actually be better, even though it is the cheaper one. You can go with rage, but you got more than enough flat damage as it is. What you can go for is Avenger, as previously stated, and this should be ideal. Now, hold up a second. There's an issue here. Arcane Acceleration doesn't seem to be working on the Kuvakun for some reason. On critical hit, 30% chance for 90% fire rate to primary weapons for 9 seconds, yes. It's a primary weapon, but it doesn't seem to be functioning. This is future me, of course, coming to you guys. Take a look at this, you don't get the actual bonus fire rate, I do not know why that is. It procs? It proc? Yes, you see that? Arcane Acceleration. But you're not getting the extra 90% fire rate that you should be getting. I have no idea why that is. So, my friends, we're going to be having to make an addendum to what I said earlier. Arcane Acceleration currently not working on the Kuvakum. Do not know why, but thankfully, we, we can just use Tempo instead. So, there you go. Use Arcane Tempo instead. 90% fire rate is the same proc on a critical hit. 50% chance, 12%. So, you can see exactly what is the difference and how it should bloody look. See? That's the fire rate you should be getting. For those sentinel buffs or companion buffs, you have two options. You can go for the Panzer Vulpophila and get yourself the Vital Procs, in which case you no longer need to build a weapon for Vital, you can build it for Corrosive. If not, you can use a Sentinel, any Sentinel at all. Just simply make sure that on that little Sentinel's weapon, you have the Vigilante mods that will get you the 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. If you used Vigilante supplies on your weapon, obviously you don't need to use it here. We're gonna be using the Panzer Volpe Volpe, like so. And instead, on the weapon, we will no longer make Vital, and instead we're gonna go for a little bit of electricity, not any electricity, of course, we're gonna with Prime Charge Shell. That's the beauty about some of these Kuva weapons. You can just go balls to the walls, maxed out with Prime mods, Galvanized mods, Rivens the works, because you do have that extra capacity without worrying about reforming every single time. So as you can see, now I got a whole lot of corrosive on the weapon, Vital will be coming from the Panzer Volpafila. One more time for the level 160 Corrupted Heavy Goons, we're gonna be activating Mirage Zen Power Ability, then her free ability Eclipse for an absolutely massive damage increase. And one more time, my friends, quiet please for the best animation in Warframe. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, of course, the weapon was a monster before. What exactly do you think will happen now? As you can see, the weapon is fully capable of my favorite magic trick. But now you see him, now you don't. And I think that says all I need to about the weapon. It's an extremely powerful weapon, one that I highly recommend to just about anyone. The only issue I feel in actual gameplay is the startup, right? That that Those first two seconds when the spool up is not fully ready. That's the only kink in the armor of the comb. If you don't take into account the ammo guzzling, of course. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want me to do a particular piece of content. For example, I would like to see this weapon build, or that weapon build, and so on and so forth. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.